Hi, and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about serious adverse events and what a monitor has to keep in mind. More after the break. Last time we talked about the priorities and what a monitor has check first at a trial site. Watch our last video about informed consent first if you haven't already. After the consent forms have been reviewed, a monitor has to continue with the review of the serious adverse events. A lot of mistakes happen here. The serious adverse events are often reported too late and the forms are filled out illegibly and incorrectly especially when the investigator does not see the connection between the SAE and the study or cannot understand the reporting obligation of serious adverse events without a causal link. Few doctors also proactively provide additional information for serious adverse events that have not been fully documented after the initial reporting. However, a serious adverse event should remain on the investigator's to-do list until the case is closed for example, until healing, death, or until the end of the follow-up period, which is described in the study protocol. Whenever there is new information about a serious adverse event, it must be reported within 24 hours. Ask the investigator about new serious adverse events and new information about old serious adverse events before you look for them or find them accidentally. Serious adverse event reports should include documentation of the start date, onset date, the date the physician came to know about the serious adverse event, awareness date, and the date the serious adverse events was reported, reporting date. This makes it relatively easy to see if the serious adverse event has been reported within 24 hours of its awareness. Of course, you have to compare this data with the source documents like hospital reports or medical records. If faxed external hospital reports are available, you will usually find the fax date on the report. This would then represent the awareness date. If there is no such thing, the awareness date should also be written into the medical record by the study staff to avoid any doubts later. Note that the serious adverse event description should match the adverse event description in the case report form, so that problems do not arise later when the clinical data from the case report form and the safety data from the pharmacovigilance department will be compared. The serious adverse event must also be clearly identified on the serious adverse event notification form, so it is best if an accurate diagnosis is done. For example, for a fracture that leads to hospitalization, the investigator must write where the fracture is located, for example on the right femur or left shoulder. If this is not possible, symptoms can be reported where each symptom represents an adverse event and can therefore be a separate serious adverse event. It must therefore be clearly documented which of the symptoms matches with the definition of a serious adverse event. If the investigator considers the link to be possible and therefore ticks possibly, this means that the sponsor must assume a link in order to reflect the worst case. If the relationship is possible from the investigator's point of view, it is also possible to assume that something should be done with regard to the study medication. For example, dose reduction or discontinuation of the medication would be the logical consequence. The causality would then continue to be observed. If discontinuation or reduction of dose has no effect on the serious adverse event, this may be a sign that the correlation is absent. If the possible link is seen but the medication is not changed, you should ask the doctor if this is done deliberately. If this is the case, it should also be described in the comments section on the other page, so that the pharmacovigilance staff can understand this. Another important piece of information in a serious adverse event report is the outcome of the serious adverse event. The fact that the outcome is unknown should be an extreme exception. This is of course often the case with an initial serious adverse event report, but in the course of follow-up reports the outcome should be reported to the pharmacovigilance department at some point. 
If the serious adverse event is a non-reversible disease, such as HIV infection, it is of course possible to tick continuous persistence. If a patient suffers from breast cancer, for example, which necessitates the amputation of the breast, recovered with sequelae should be ticked if the therapy is progressing well because the acute disease status of the patient has improved. Although the cancer has been cured, the amputation of the breast is irreversible and remains as a consequence. In any case, the serious adverse event report must be signed by an investigator. It is not the role of a study nurse to report in serious adverse event. If the investigator is not available within the 24-hour reporting period, a study nurse should make the report, but once the investigator is present, the report must be signed and faxed again. So much about serious adverse events and what a monitor has to keep in mind. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.